got to go to All right, thanks. We got to go to work. Bye. Hey, thanks for stopping by. This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And this is uh, one of my typical hobbies here, listening to shortwave, in this case, some amateur radio operators on 40 meters. And what you want to do is you want to log these things. You know, record what you picked up and what you've listened to. So you can go back and look it up again or just read over what you did in the past you know it's a good thing to have a log now here's here's my log and this is probably not what you want to do I've really gotten sloppy and that's one of the reasons I'm doing the show today to uh, get reorganized myself but here's this is a spiral notebook here and here is some loggings I did this was back uh, July of 2014 and all I wrote down was the frequency and the station title, name, description of somehow of the station. And that's all I wrote down. What I don't have, don't have the time that I receive these stations. I don't even have what radio I use when I receive these stations. Or what antenna. So this is pretty useless. Now here's, here's a form I found on the internet. It's just a PDF file that I did a search for shortwave log yeah just shortwave log that's what I looked for of course about a thousand entries but I found this PDF file that you can print out and it gives you the nice columns and everything now if you have in a program like Microsoft Excel you can make this not a big deal and this in this case it'll be a hard copy so you'd print a bunch of these sheets punch some holes in it put it a three ring binder and there's your log and this one's got lots more information than I was doing here in my data book um, for instance and this is for an amateur radio station so it has additional information if you're only a lister that you wouldn't fill out it's got the date of the contact the time that it started the frequency, the mode, whether it was AM, single sideband, whatever, and then it has power that you were using when you were transmitting. In the case of a listener, that would be NA. Call sign if you were listening to an amateur radio operator or the call sign of the station you were listening to. And then the signal you were, the signal level you were receiving, the time that you stop listening and then some notes and then whether you have sent or received a QSL card so this is much better than what I've been doing lately now there are hundreds of software programs that will do this logging for you in some cases or just gives you a format to put the information in and if you go to dxzone.com and you go to their catalog page and then you go to software and then you go to logging it'll give you like four full pages of logging programs one I used to use many years ago is ham radio deluxe and it was used for both controlling your radio and it had a section for logging and it worked quite well it did take time to type all the information in but um, then it was nice and neat and concise but you need to log your receptions or in the case of the amateur operators your communications with another amateur so it's important that you maintain a log in one much better than what I've been doing lately and uh, that way you can go back and find things that uh, you might hear a station and you only hear it one time and then six months later you, you hear it again and you can go through your log and find out, you know, where was that station? The beauty of having it on your computer, either in an Excel spreadsheet or one of these logging programs, is you can search for, say, frequency or call sign. Where here, 
it would just be a manual search in the same way here. But at least you've got a record of it. So it's important that you take the time to make a log and log your reception. And especially if you're into sending reception reports to stations and hoping to get a, a QSL card back. In this way, in this case, this is how you would keep track of it. So anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. And um, hopefully band conditions will get better. It's finally, <laughs> well, it's only going to be for two days. But for two days, we're going to have cool weather here in Florida. Actually down in the 40s. And then it goes back to the 80s. And I don't know if those type of weather conditions are affecting shortwave listing. Really shouldn't be. It's more the solar activity that affects reception, plus other things, of course. Um, so that's the show. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.